So you finished your drywall repair, you watched my videos and got it done right, got it smooth, ready for texture. Now it's time to break out the old can texture and blast some on the wall, right? Hold on, let me show you the right way. If you're gonna match your texture, there's a bunch of tricks to it. You can't just grab a can of texture and spray it on there or it's gonna look like this or maybe this, or I might show you some more here in a minute. But if you stick around, I'm gonna show you how to do this right, right after this. Hey, thanks for staying tuned. I'm glad you stayed here on channel Lucky 10. That's my birthday, by the way, of a certain month, I won't tell. Well, maybe, it was June. But I'm glad you didn't turn that dial, for those of you that know what I'm talking about. So today what we're going to do is show you how to do this, this uh, drywall texture matching. And this is an art. Now before I go into this much further, I want to say thank you for stopping by. You guys are why I do this. Without your support, I couldn't keep doing this. So thanks a lot for your support. And if you appreciate what I do, check out our Patreon video, our Patreon page. That's where you can show your support. You can also get in-depth uh, information that other people can't get. I'll release videos there that no one else will see. I'll release early release videos. You can contact me directly with questions, get deeper answers. We can even do a video chat if you want. Just check it out. There's a link in the description below. That's right down there below the screen. You know where it is. So anyway, let's get into this. Um, there's a whole lot more to matching texture than just going down to the old hardware store and grabbing a can of texture and pushing the button and spraying it on the wall because as you saw in some of those pictures and some of these right here, like this one right here, this is just gobbed on, sprayed on texture. And if you don't know what you're doing and you just gob it on, it looks terrible, honestly. I mean, I would rather see nothing on the wall than these kind of nasty texture matches and that usually comes from people simply not understanding the process now what do you need to do this well what we're going to use today is a compressor based uh, spraying method not the can texture i rarely use that and i'll explain that in a minute so i'm going to use this texture sprayer right here this is a handheld hopper you can pick one of these up at Home Depot, Lowe's, etc., for about 70 bucks, or go down to Harbor Freight, and I think they have one for about $30. I have one. I'm going to do a test on that and do a review and see how it comes out, but I honestly think that one will do just fine, especially for these small jobs. Now, for extended use for professionals, I would say it'll probably wear out too fast, but um, we're going to need that texture sprayer and of course a compressor and your compressor usually needs to put out around three to four cfm at um, 90 psi roughly so it needs to be at least a decent one that's a kind of a minimum the higher the cfm the more you can break the texture up but that's about all mine puts out and i can get about any texture match i want i'll show you a couple of different varieties here um other than that you need texture now what we use for texture you can go buy a bag of powdered texture and mix, mix it up but i'll give you a little trick don't do it you don't need to that's really for spraying big jobs and that and even i don't do it what i do is i take a simple box of lightweight all-purpose uh, drywall mud or it doesn't have to be lightweight but like this this one right here is what i use it's called plus three by usg Whatever you have in your area, it can be a lightweight or it can be a regular weight. And then you just mix it up and add a lot of water to it and thin it down. Now, how thick you get it, that's really hard for me to explain. Hey, I forgot to show you how thin the texture was, so here's a little demonstration. You can see I can pour it out, but it doesn't pour out like water. It's just really thin drywall mud. That's as fast as it'll pour. So hope that helps. When I explain these variables, 
it'll probably make a little bit more sense to you because there's actually about six variables that go into determining what your texture is going to look like. So you've got your mud, you've turned it into a texture, and you want to mix it up really well so that you don't have lumps in it, and you've got your texture sprayer, air hose, and your compressor. And that's really should be all you need, other than you probably ought to have a wall or a ceiling to spray it on. Uh, I know I'm being a smart ass here. You could just spray it in the air, but it probably won't work. So here we've got a job where this texture, as you can see in this video right here, it's basically a fairly thin texture. It's not standing out from the wall too much, but there's a lot of texture on the wall. And how we look is basic, basically going to be by putting a lot of small texture on it. Now, you're probably looking at it thinking, well, that looks like big drops. That, that is kind of true. It does kind of look like that, but usually if you spray big drops, it's going to look thicker and globier, like in this picture right here. I think I showed you that one, but those are big drops. If you spray a lot of little drops, they'll build up on each other and they'll end up looking like this. So, this is really an art, like I say, so you, if you're going to match the texture, I would get a scrap piece, put it off to the side, and start playing with some of these variables I'm going to show you until you get the look you want. Now, what are those variables? All right, number one is the thickness of your mud. The thinner the mud is, the finer you can get the drops. The thicker the mud, the bigger the drops are going to come out, and the more they're going to stand off the wall. You don't want to get it so thin that it's like absolutely like water but you're going to get it fairly close for what i'm using today and i'll show you it's pretty thin but it's not like water if it's running out the end of my texture sprayer when i'm not even pulling the trigger i really got it too thin so thickness will determine how big the drops are and how flat it lays and then air pressure i generally run 35 to 45 psi the higher the PSI, the more it will break it up and therefore the smaller the drops. The amount of air that you allow to come through your gun is also another factor. And the way we do that, here's the gun again. This one's my dirty one in use. This right here controls the amount of air. My compressor controls the PSI. So the less air I let come through here, the bigger the drops will be and so I generally just run the higher PSI all the time and I control it right here. This is controlling the CFM more than the pressure, but um, you can hear when I open this, that lets the air out. So the more I open it, the finer the drops, the less I open it, the coarser the drops. Now the next variable is the nozzle size. Now these nozzles, Let's see if I, if I can find a picture, I'll put one up on the screen here. These nozzles come in three or four different sizes. I am using a medium small one. There is one smaller than this. And for what I'm doing, I can adjust my variables in such a way that I can get most any texture out of this one nozzle. Occasionally I go to a bigger nozzle and occasionally I go to a smaller one. But that nozzle, the bigger it is, the bigger the drops. The smaller it is, the smaller the drops. But the other variable is how far you pull this trigger because there's actually a little piston in there. Some mud may run out here when I do this, but when you pull that, if you can see, yeah, it started the mud flowing because I released the beast and my trigger is actually being sticky, which is not a good thing. Let's get it up there. This one's getting a little bit worn out on me, so I'm just going to plug it for now. So the more I pull this trigger, the more that comes out. The more that comes out, the bigger the drops and the thicker it goes on, the faster it goes on. So when I want a really fine texture, what I do is barely pull this trigger. When I want a coarser one, I pull it further. And again, I also adjust the air. This little knob right here, controls the maximum that you can pull the trigger. Well, I, I generally just leave it wide open because I can just control how far I pull it because I've done this long enough. But if you want a consistent pattern, what you would do is adjust this until 
you can pull the trigger all the way and you like that pattern and then you'll get that pattern every time by just pulling it maximum that's what that's for and you can also lock that trigger in place if you're spraying a lot and then it reduces hand fatigue let's see if we've covered all the variables here so let's go over them again in order we have let's see if i remember the order i did <laughs> okay we have uh, mud thickness we have um nozzle size we have trigger pull distance we have air flow we have cfm and then a final variable uh, would be the distance from the wall because the closer you get the more it's going to kind of splatter and look smeary so you don't want to get real close to the wall so there's those six basic variables that are going to determine that so just play with them and just remember, the bigger that you want the drops and the coarser, the further you pull the trigger and the less air and the thicker the mud and the wider the nozzle. The finer, the smaller of all of those. But with this one nozzle, I'll show you, I can actually give a heavy globby texture or a very fine texture. So let's do a little bit of that right now. We're gonna start out with a big drop texture that is not going to match this at all. But if that's what you want, it'll work. So we're, what we're gonna do is pull the trigger most of the way with very little air flow coming out. So let me, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move the camera into a closer position so you can see what's happening better. And I'll just narrate it from off on the side. Okay, here we go. You can see some wet spots. I'm having compressor problems today. My pressure switch is, is out again, but I'm really trying to shoot this video for you. So I'm gonna have to work on my compressor and bring an alternate in here. Anyway, we're gonna try this again. I had no pressure last time. We're gonna do low air volume and bigger trigger pull. Same texture, same nozzle size. We're not gonna change those things. Now, usually you want to experiment because you can't guess every time, so go a little bigger. Now you see how those drops are quite big, but they really don't match. So let me move You see where you can see it. Actually, I'm going to scrape that one off. Let's do a, a more of a medium one. I'm just going to do a medium texture right out here. So that's fairly medium, but it still is not going to match this. The way we match this is going to be a fine texture, but a lot of it. So more air pressure and less trigger pull. there we would have it. Now I'm going to show you with the video here, that's going to be a pretty close match once it's all painted. Okay, you see my texture there and moving over, that's going to match pretty well. I hope you can see that. I'm holding my camera backwards here. But see if we had left it like that, those bigger drops stacked would have gotten too thick and they wouldn't look right. So did that help or did I just give you more questions? If I did, if you got any questions about this technique right here, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. I will try and answer them. I'll tell you that I'm gonna answer questions on Patreon faster, but I'll get around to answering it. It might take me three or four or five days if you answer or ask the question below come to Patreon, I'll try and answer them like daily or every other day. But what do you think? You think that's something you could do? All right, now let's talk, wait, before you go, hey, hang on, come back here. You, 
you over there. Turn around, come back here. Unclick your computer, come here. Now, let's talk about can texture. Can you do this with a can texture? Yes. The reason, the main reason I don't is it's not quite as good. It cost out the backside because a can of texture, what you want to buy is the pro grade texture. Don't buy the cheaper version, buy the pro grade. It looks like this picture right here. And the reason is it gives you more of the control over those variables I was talking about. The cheap ones just pretty much give you, I think, one or two uh, variables you can control. And you just can't shape it enough to match your texture. Now, the other reason I don't is this little spot right here, it's roughly, oh, I'd say this is about six square feet. One can of texture this heavy probably wouldn't even do it, and they're about $18 to $20 for a can. So that's a big reason I don't use them. Uh, two is that I can just vary it. In this job here, there's actually different textures because it's an old apartment. Like I showed you some of these, here's some different looking textures in here, so I have to be able to shape it more, and I can do that more of this. But how you do it, here's the trick. Read the can first and figure out how to operate it. Usually on the pro grade, you can control a finer spray, um, more air pressure. I don't use these very much, so I forget. But sometimes when you go to spray, it won't break it up enough. It's still coming out with two big globs, and no matter what you do, it's just doing that. Here's a little inside tip. Heat it up under some hot water. Now don't get too carried away. I doubt you could blow one up, but I'll usually run it right under the sink hot water for say three or four minutes or let it sit in a pan of hot water not boiling just hot water out of your faucet for you know four or five six minutes and that's going to build up a little more pressure inside the can especially if it's been cold and you'll find out boy it'll just spray much finer so there's your little inside tip other than that practice if you don't have a, a scrap piece of sheetrock put a piece of plastic on the wall or some brown paper or some masking paper, whatever you gotta do, but practice. Even I, when I'm gonna spray one of these, I usually have some masking nearby and I'll tweak my settings where I think they'll, they should be, spray off to the side a little, make sure that I'm kind of right in that area, and then I'll get to spraying. So if that helps you out, great, I, I sure hope so, and if it does, Come visit me over on Patreon and be sure and click that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified of the future videos, click the bell icon. If you don't want to, don't click it, erase it. And if you have any comments, ask them in down below. If you like this video, of course, thumbs up. If you don't, give me the old thumbs down. Let me know. I want to put out a good video for you guys. But until the next video, you guys take care and we'll see you on the next go round.